guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the Moby Nova Ice. There's a lot to talk about in this video, so let's get started. The first thing that I want to point out is all of the functions of this OLED screen. You can't really see it until it actually turns on. It's 96 by 96 pixels, and when it does turn on, you'll probably see that it's flickering, but it's actually not flickering right now. It's just that the refresh rate is slower than the camera that is taking this video. So the first function is kind of to act as a system notifier. So if I press this button on the side, camera button, which is kind of weird that they mean it the camera button, um, we will get this. And basically Basically, it tells us the time, uh, battery life, whether we have a cell phone signal, and right now the SIM card is out, so there's no signal. And it'll also tell you if an, you have a new message down below here. And that's really all you can do with it. You can't tap on it um, to bring up an email or anything like that. The, the purpose of the screen in this case is just to give you some system notifications. Now, the other two cases is that one, it will act as a D-pad when you turn on the phone, and you get a little bit of haptic feedback when you press on a button. And it's actually very weird and kind of cumbersome to use the D-pad because it's completely flat, so you have to look at it each time. And another problem is that the, um, the soft keys and the D-pad are so far away from each other that you're moving your thumb around a lot, and I really try to avoid using the D-pad if possible. Um, and the third way that, that this OLED screen is used is for new message notifications. So if you get a new email, you'll get a picture of an envelope that fills up the entire screen in kind of like a brownish color. Although oddly, this shows up mostly when you turn off the device and you have a new email, which is strange because if you have a new email, you'd want to see the notification right when you turn on your device, not when you're turning it off. Oh well. So let's take a look at the rest of the device here. So the screen is 400 down and 240 across, but not really. You get this unchanged changeable row of icons that you cannot alter or adjust. Um, this is kind of reminiscent of early Palm devices or even the Apple Newton um, that gives you uh, kind of a launcher for various applications and system settings. So basically what you're stuck with is a QVGA screen, which is a very last generation resolution, making things on the screen appear very grainy and pixelated. It's unfortunate that uh, this device doesn't take advantage of this space down here. That said, let's talk about how MobiNova has used this space down here. So if I tap on the first one, it says telephone, it will go into the MobiNova interface. And what we can do here is if we tap on phone, it takes us right to our uh, our phone, and this is the skin for the phone. The screen is small, and it's hard to, to type the, the buttons on the screen. Um, it's best used with a stylus, not very touch friendly. We can go to Moby Friends, which is actually pretty cool. It gives you a circle of people that you call often, so if I tap on this person, it will bring up um, different ways to contact this person. So I can send them a text message, an email, do a voice call, remove. Um, it's a really great way, I think, to, to access different ways of communicating with someone. If we go to context, it will obviously go to context, standard Windows mobile thing, call history, and voice dial. Now if we go to the right, we are taken to the next icon, and let me go back out and show you that we just go right over to application, so that does the same thing. And from here, this is just a program launcher really, so we can go into email or SMS or um, anything like that, and we can go back again, or I could have uh, swiped my finger to the side. And if we go into multimedia, we have access to things like the camera, FM radio, and the camera's having trouble focusing because it's a weird kind of a contrast there. If we go into settings, uh, we can change some settings. If we go into sound, we stay within the MobiNova interface here and we can adjust the system value or um, turn on ring or vibrate. If we swipe our finger to the right, we will go to connectivity and here you can turn on uh, phone or Wi-Fi. This is kind of like a skinned communication manager really. Go to the right again. And here is the display settings. Um, from here, we can adjust the backlight or we can leave it on auto. I'm going to put it on manual there. And if we go one more to the right, we get uh, some system settings. We can turn on and off Moby Feel, which is the haptic feedback. Maybe a good idea to turn this off, actually, because it'll help with battery life. And as we'll see in the final review, uh, the Moby Nova Ice doesn't have the best battery life, unfortunately. Um, and that, that's really the end. So let's go back, back again. And then we'll go over to this last one that says today, which brings us to the Moby Nova um, today screen, or it's actually a kind of a program, and this is what it looks like. So what we can do is we can tap on this big clock, and we can get multiple uh, time zones. So we can set different cities, and we can add a city if we press that button. So I'm going to go go back there. Oops. Um, if we tap on the calendar here, we will obviously launch into the calendar. If we tap on Whoops, got out of that. 
If we tap on the email icon, we will obviously go into email. And if you've missed calls, it will show up here as well. But I like to stay in the standard Windows Mobile Today screen, which Moby Nova has at customized just a little bit. You get this row of contacts, and if you tap on one of the people, it will take you into that screen that I showed you earlier where you can quickly dial um, certain functions of, of certain people. So it's nice that Moby Nova tried to kind of customize the Windows Mobile interface, but I don't think this was the best way to do it. I think this is kind of a crude interface that doesn't look too visually pleasing. And I really hate the fact that you can't remove this. You can't disable these buttons. And there's been so many times that I've tried to touch a soft key button here, and I've accidentally pressed one of these buttons below. That's, an, that's another big problem um, with this device. So that said, let's drill into the programs. I'm going to take out the stylus to do this. And uh, here we go. So we have standard programs here. If we go into the control center, that is actually going to be um, that, that's, that program that we went through earlier, where it shows you the settings on the device that you can do through that interface. Um, we also have FM radio. And you can't really do much with that unless you've got a pair of headphones connected. And you saw the, uh, the D-pad flicker on there. Um, Moby Friends, that was the application with the kind of rotary um, way of communicating with people. Going down the list, standard stuff, world time, we were in there before, world weather. Um, let's tap on that and see what that looks like. And you can list uh, the, the weather for a city, although, of course, I don't have a data connection right now because my SIM card's not in. And you can flick back and forth to multiple cities. So nice little integration there. You also get Microsoft Office Suite. And let me show you the on-screen keyboards while we're in there. So I'm going to go to Word Mobile. Now, unfortunately, you only get one on-screen keyboard option beyond the standard Windows Mobile keyboards. You know, HTC devices have three. They have one the T9 style, one is the Sure type style, like as you see here, and one is the full QWERTY. That said, I actually really like the Sure type keyboard. Because the way the device is designed, when you type, you're actually resting your fingers right in the center of the device, whereas with some other similar devices, you're typing down here, which is kind of awkward. So it's kind of easy to, to type. So the day is Thursday. And I, I really not had any problems with typing with this keyboard. That said, if I want to type in a web address in the web browser, for example, it's really impossible to use this because it's trying to use T9. So I have to always revert back to the, you know, the stylus tap tap keyboard here um, because there are no other keyboard options available that are big enough for me to um, use with my thumbs. So wish there were more on-screen keyboards included on the Moby Nova Ice. Now, this device does have an accelerometer. Um, that said, it only works in certain screens, and I've only found two so far that it works in. Um, so if I flip it now, it will not rotate. But if I go into Pocket Internet Explorer, and by the way, there's no better browser included. Uh, that said, you can always download Opera Mobile 9.5 or SkyFi or something like that. It will work in this screen. There it goes. And the icons kind of reorient themselves but the text does not, which is kind of weird, so you have to turn it this way to read the text. Um, it would be nice if the accelerometer worked in all screens. And finally, let's drill into settings and see what we have there, anything interesting. So if we go into the Today option, we can turn off the Moby plugin, which is that one you saw with all of the uh, pictures of, of frequently called people. There is no way to turn off these buttons, and I've been in the program and I've talked to the company. There's just no way to do it, unfortunately. I think that's a, that's a big problem for those that don't want these icons on the bottom to take up extra screen space. So here we are in system, and we can go down, take a look at memory. I have a bunch of programs open. It has uh, 81 megabytes of program memory available, which is eh, OK, not so great. Finally, if we go into connections, we can go to the wireless manager to see what that looks like. And we saw this earlier. This device does have the bands necessary to do HSDPA in the United States. Um, I'm using AT&T and I get HSDPA signal over uh, this device. So that is good. And that's pretty much it for the settings. So overall, I think the Moby Nova Ice has a lot of usability issues, starting with the OLED screen. It's completely flat. It's difficult to use. You can't feel for it. Um, its functionality is quite limited. You can only use it as a D-pad system notifier, and uh, it, it will show you when you have a new email, things like that. And I think it's taking a toll on battery life unnecessarily. I mean, you're powering two screens here when you could just have a standard D-pad, have it be easier to use, and not take up that extra battery life. In addition, this application launcher, while it's useful sometimes, 
times, and I applaud Mobinova's effort to kind of bring this new interface. You can't remove it, and it really gets in the way when you're trying to operate the phone and trying to use a soft key. You're accidentally pressing these all the time, which really is, is quite annoying. Uh, and finally, the screen is low resolution. Basically, what you have at the end of the day is a QVGA screen, and... Uh, all new Windows Mobile devices that are coming out, at least the ones that I can think of immediately, have a high resolution screen above this, uh, making for a clearer image. So I think those three things really take a toll on the usability of the Mobi Nova Ice, which is a shame because it, it has otherwise nice hardware, the performance is good, and it has a lot to offer in terms of the wireless radios that it includes and the FM radio and everything like that. But we'll have the full take on this coming up in the full review where we'll talk about battery life, pros and cons, and everything like that. So keep it to pocketnow.com for the full review of the Mobi Nova Ice. That's it for now.